From a young age, a lot of us are taught to follow our dreams and that the best thing we could do for ourselves is turn what we love into a career. There were a lot of subjects I was interested in in high school. I especially loved biology because I enjoyed learning about botany and the human body. There was even a point during my second year of art school where I applied for biomedical engineering and was accepted. I was really second guessing whether I made the right choice of pursuing art professionally. I did stick through with a YouTube channel to boot. So sometimes I do wonder what life would look like had I chosen a different path. What's up, Adi? Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rumbo, yay! And for those who don't know me already, I'm an artist and I make videos just about that. So if that interests you, you might want to hit the subscribe button down below. I'm still quite a small creator, but I have already seen a lot of you in the comments want to pursue your art full time. It is your passion, it is your dream, long awaiting the day that you can spend your nine to five in an art studio and escape the rat race that is the corporate office job world. It's such a beautiful romanticized dream, one I often had growing up, which is why I'm here today. That's how I thought I would be able to finesse the system and have a happy life that is stress-free, pursuing my passion as my work. It wasn't until I actually began to set this plan in motion, however, that I realized there is a high probability that I was wrong. I believe that the decision to pursue your passion full-time is a decision that needs to be carefully thought about. But today we'll be talking about it to hopefully help you decide whether you're up for the challenge or whether it is something that you need to think twice about. This is not to scare you away from pursuing your passion full-time, nor is it saying that if if you choose this path, you will forever be doomed by doing so. Rather, it's a video that I wish I watched before pursuing art professionally so that I could have reality set to my romanticized dreams. But before we get onto this video, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on my post notifications so you're notified when next I upload a video. We are so, 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 so close to the goal of 15,000 subscribers. It has been a crazy year. Thank you so much. If you want to help me reach this goal, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and share this with all your friends please and thank you. I understood very quickly that pursuing your passion full-time does not mean that you will be passionate about your work all the time. I had to redefine my relationship with art because it no longer was the sole purpose of allowing me to explore and have a creative outlet. Art became work and for some people work and art or work and creativity do not mix well. I enjoy the labors of art making. It is a very intensive interest. It takes from me as much as it adds to me. I loved spending hours on something because I felt called to create it. Seeing people interact with things that my hands have made for like days or weeks or even months. When it turned into a career, the labor of art became more of an obligation. There were more times that I needed to do a lot of intensive work, not because I wanted to, but because I had to. This relationship change meant that art was no longer just a space for my inner child to roam around free, but now it had to share with the very real situations and instances where I needed to support my adult self. Something that I was stubborn to admit for years and years and years, even going through art school, is that one is not only an artist because their work is in a gallery for strangers to see. That is not the intrinsic measure of what makes you an artist or a creative. You're an artist because you make art. Simple as that. Before you dive into pursuing art full time or any creative passion, I want you to question why, whether this has any ties to some sort of personal validation that you seek. It's not inherently a bad thing. I just think it's important to know why you want to do something. And also ask yourself if you are okay with your inner child sharing space with the very real situations of having your passion be your job. The fact that bills need to be met and work needs to get done whether you want to or not. Dealing with the big bad D word disappointment. When we were kids, our drawings were loved by our teachers, our parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, friends, etc, etc. They were put on fridge doors or folded in wallets or placed in a frame on a bedside table. Nowadays, some people's art is sought approval by many faceless accounts online. One prays that it gets pushed on the algorithm so that it is seen by at least a thousand people. Or alternatively, your art is sought the approval via a portfolio that is sent 
in two different programs, exhibitions, hoping that your art is good enough to get you through certain doors. It doesn't always happen that way. Actually, you may already know that most of the times it won't happen. And that's where we see our passion come face to face with disappointment. When I was younger, I probably was disappointed in something I made because it didn't come out the way I wanted it to be. But nowadays, um, having my art as my profession, I have to deal very regularly with my art being rejected by someone else. When I apply to different art programs, I get disappointed because it is being rejected, so it's not seen as good enough for that program. If something that I posted online wasn't that popular, I would be disappointed because it was seen by a few hundred and not a hundred thousand. Which is sad, honestly, for me, because a few decades ago, too, I'm not that old, <laughs> I don't know why I said a few, I was very happy when the few closest people around me saw what I made. Disappointment became more of a visceral emotion when I took my art more professionally. There were a lot more concrete consequences if things didn't go entirely my way. Disappointment is not a nice feeling, it's an ugly one at that. And if it is not acknowledged correctly, that ugliness may feed into how we view our art. I've had many times that I have viewed these failures as a direct reflection of the value of my work. And that made me so resistant to creating again because I was so fearful of being a disappointment. This is something I think we need to be a lot more cognizant of. Do you know how to deal with disappointment when things don't go your way? Do you know how not to equate these disappointments with the value of your work or your identity as an artist, creative? whatever it is you do. You might even be a professional bowler. Answer these questions very honestly. It's okay. I myself am still very much a work in progress, bearing the ebbs and flows and weathering the storms. In my case, my visual art practice isn't the only avenue that I'm pursuing right now. I also do social media management for different companies. I also have this YouTube channel and then my art. Diversifying my different streams of work is a vital plus because I am working towards developing a life where I am sustainable on these different passions. But because it is all work that I have built up for myself, it means that I have to deal with many different seasons and storms that come my way. The practical side of things being finances. I still, thankfully, live with my parents, which means I have a huge safety net when it comes to pursuing my passions, especially when there are times where I don't reap enough financially for the month. I still have my basic needs more than met. With all of these provisions, I am a able to quote unquote pursue the passions I have the way I am doing right now. Had I not had this kind of support, this video would have been a lot more different and I would have had to be a lot more realistic. You are as successful as the systems you set in place. There is such a thing as over planning, but do not let it sway you into the dangers of under planning, especially when it comes to managing your own business. Many fail to go into art full time because they underestimated or misjudged how to sustain themselves on consistent finances and opportunities. The great thing about pursuing your passions full time is the independence that comes with it. But this can also be its fatal flaw. Are you naturally independent? Do you think that you're capable of setting your own schedules, being on time with things and getting work done? Once again, answer these questions honestly. This may not be the case for all of us. Maybe you would decide to work for a company, work under a company or a brand or management where there is a lot more structure and less freedom. And that is something that I am also learning about or looking to learn more about myself this year, whether I would like more structure but restricted freedom or would prefer to have full reign and bear more volatile situations. The truth is that not every artist needs to have a professional art career. The truth is is that a lot of us may thrive even more if we had a different full-time obligation and left art to be our creative outlet. There is no shame in going one way or the other. Better yet, there is no shame in building a life where you go through different seasons and choose different ways to pursue art. Ultimately, this life is yours, not mine, not your friends, not your mama's, not anyone else's but yours. It is, however, very important not to underestimate and over romanticize your life to the point where you may not be able to sustain yourself and face consequences that will impact you in the long run. I'm not here to make that decision for you. I'm just here to provide some very concrete questions that we should all ask, especially if you do make the exciting decision to pursue your art full time for a different season. But yeah, I'm just here to share what I've learned so 
far. I hope this helped. If you have enjoyed this video, check out the pinned comment where there is a link to a playlist with some of my favorite videos. But I'm going to end this off here and say thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like, if you like me, subscribe, comment down below, all that fun jazz. And until then.